At first, I didn't think I was going to make this video, but in light of some recent events, I thought it would be appropriate to talk about it. So, hey RTBF, um, this is me. Um, a little rough sketch of me. <laughs> I'm not much of an artist. My full name is Paula Jimena Chirino Stalkar, and I was born in a nice little, um, well, not so little country called Peru. I was born in this little city named Huancayo near the Andes Mountains of Peru. This other city um, named Lima is also of major importance to me, uh, and I will explain why. So, as you can see here, I currently live with my mom, dad, and my annoying older brother, Luis. So, here's a quick side note, and I do this a lot. Let me show you how my parents met. So, my parents met through a mutual friend in Peru, where they grew up. She was friends with my dad at the time, but she lived in Lima with my mom. So here's how it basically went down. Uh, the friend was like, oh, and um, part of my basicness here, uh, OMG, there's this really cool guy who lives like three hours away in Huancayo. He's kind of geeky, but he's pretty nice, so you should really talk to him. So my mom's like, okay. So, long story short, they talk for hours, basically, every day, fall in love, and um, eventually my mom takes a bus to go visit my dad in San Carlos, and they fall in love again, and it's really great. So, a couple of years later, they have my brother, and then a couple of years after that, they get married. And then, two years later, I was born in a small hospital in El Tambo Junin, Huancayo. My older brother and I grew up for the most part in uh, San Carlos, uh, which was a nearby town where I was born in Huancayo, but sometimes we went back to visit our grandma's house, or La Casa de la Mamá Rosita. Our aunts gave us extra attention when we were growing up, particularly to me since I was the princess of the family. You know, being the only little girl in the household at the time, uh, mi tia Susi especially dressed me up and made me listen and dance to Shakira, who was really popular. And uh, everything was fine, you know, uh, until it wasn't. <laughs> My mom and dad supposedly went on vacation when I was two and left me and my brother to be cared for by my grandma and her two daughters. They went to America to visit my father's mother who was residing in New York. Now, fast forward a couple months later, my brother and I moved to the United States with them. I didn't think much of the move at the time and I told my grandma and my aunts that I'd come back to see them. but. Um, well, unfortunately, this wasn't the case. Now, fast forward to a couple of years later, uh, I was starting school in America. I was pretty shy when I first started school since I had a thick Latino accent, and I couldn't really understand what my peers were saying. Learning English at an early age helped me accustom myself to my new environment fast. I made really good friends from an early age, and I learned a lot of cool skills. Uh, by the time I turned 10, I was pretty Americanized. Now, on another side note, I wanted to mention my grandpa from my dad's side. He was a very important figure for me during my childhood. He was the one person who went out of his way to make me touch back on my Peruvian roots. He was Huancayino, born in Huancayo, just like me. He told me great stories about his upbringing in La Sierra and he also taught me some Quechua which was the Peruvian folk language and Peruvian folk music and finally had a dance of Zapateo which was a traditional dance in Huancayo. I didn't think much of his efforts at the time since I had the idea that I would go back to Peru someday. Anyways, I was pretty happy and carefree as a child. Then the Fire Nation attacked um, just kidding, I'm actually talking about adolescence here. Ugh, adolescence. So, as many of you probably know, adolescence is a really rough time in our lives. 
<sighs> it was especially rough for me, I, I believe, and I'll tell you why. When I first started adolescence, I didn't break out or anything thanks to my mom's super genes. But my development was more evident in my emotions. Uh, I, like many people in the world, had severe social anxiety, depression, and mild hallucinations. I remember it all starting in middle school when I would come home every day crying and refusing to get up the next day. My thoughts at the time were that there was this these group of girls in the school out to get me. I had a major fight with my best friend who I legit considered my sister at the time. And for the following years, she would talk badly about me to my new friends. And every time I tried to make a new friend in school, she would integrate that girl into her group and our groups were enemies according to her. So although this seems like a silly little girl fight to me now, it had a deep effect on me emotionally for a long time and that's what led to my social anxiety. And then came high school. Ooh. <laughs> high school was a very different social environment for me since there were kids from the other middle school in Nero, which was my hometown. I went to Albert Leonard Middle School, the predominantly white privileged middle school. The other school was Isaac, which was located in downtown Nero, and the student population there was mostly made up of minority groups. The diversity in the school was really big, and I met people who were more like me since they were raised under a similar household. I met some really nice people and formed a close group during my four years at high school, but somehow the depression worsened. So fast forward to today. Enrolling in college was one of the best decisions I have ever made. My social skills are getting better. I make friends in every group and club I decide to associate myself with. And most importantly, I'm finally reconnecting with my roots. Now, the reason I brought up my grandpa earlier was to provide some context about how much he means to me. His story was what really brought me to pursue this project. I wanted to touch upon the importance of memory and keeping family traditions alive. Being an immigrant family comes with various challenges, but keeping tradition and storytelling alive is of highest importance to my family. My grandpa often traveled back and forth between Peru and the United States to see his grandchildren and relatives who lived in both countries. My family has many funny stories about Grandpa and after Grandma, his wife died, retelling those stories was essentially what kept him from hurting more. I recently spoke on the phone with my Grandpa and this was essentially what made me think about the importance of memory. Uh, I was recently told that he was diagnosed with severe Alzheimer's. <sighs> Speaking with him made me truly realize how tough this condition is for not only him, but the whole family. He talked to me as though we had never spoken before, even had trouble speaking fluently, and worst of all, he greeted me after we supposedly finished our conversation. This really broke my heart, and I have to admit I burst into tears after speaking with him. Pain was too real. I don't know what to do about this situation right now, but before I end, I'm, I want to offer some words of wisdom for anyone with a grandparent, and I'm sure most of you have. So it's a rough job being a supportive grandparent. Every time I visited my grandma when she lived in a building for senior citizens, all the other residents were typically to themselves with no relatives surrounding them with their love and affection. Grandma had her grandchildren giving her attention and lived a very fulfilling life. Um, so she died with a smile, in the words of my aunt, who was with her when it happened. Someone who lacks that support, or in the case of my grandpa, can't remember his past or his struggles on a daily basis. It 
it's it's hard. Uh, never take for granted the support of any of your relatives. The gift you have of remembering important moments in your life, and make sure that you have that you live a very fulfilling life. Every one of you has plenty to offer to society, whether it's a simple or a complex contribution. I am grateful for having an extensive memory of my life. Heck, I have been keeping a diary and writing blogs for as long as I can remember. Memories of my life so far are of major importance to me, and I hope to make great new ones in the future.